Oh hey guys! So this is gonna be a plant chore video, but also an update video. I feel like it's been a while since I've done an update with a few of these plants, so we're gonna start off with the Anthium Regal. Are we? Oh my god, it's so hard. Okay, I'm just gonna bring y'all to her because she's fragile, okay? Oh. So that is my Regal. She's beautiful. Y'all can see that she does have holes. See, this is from when she wasn't even hard enough yet. If y'all follow me on Instagram, y'all saw that she just wanted to fight. Anyone else have this issue where their leaves are always fighting with the other plants? Like, can you see? My Anthea Mergal. Oh my god, let me get closer. That's my Anthea Mergal leaf fighting with my McDowell and my Queen Anthurium. So yeah. She's gorgeous. I did not show you what the leaf before that looked like. So this was the leaf before. She was smaller than that huge one that I had during like the spring. And I'm thinking I over fertilized it. So yeah, I don't know. There was definitely something going on. <laughs> so then after I saw this leaf, I was like, okay, let's flush, flush, flush. And then yeah, just fed it. It's not fully hardened off yet. There's a chance it might grow a little bit more. Yeah, ooh, I wanna take it out. Should I take it out? No, because then I'm gonna have to take the queen out. And y'all know my history with the Anthurium Warquinum. I always break the leaves. I always break the leaves. <laughs> I'm so worried. Okay, I'm just taking down the Melnochrysum because... <laughs> oh my god, hi. Isn't she so gorgeous, everyone? Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is my new leaf on my Queen Anthurium. Do you see, do you see this beautiful leaf? Ooh, and yeah, I think she's gonna, I mean, fingers crossed everyone that she's bigger than the last one. And I basically did the same thing that I was saying where I like flushed it really good since I was doing the regal. I haven't sprayed it. I've only sprayed it once. Y'all know that with my previous leaf, I wanted to preserve it. And so I sprayed it like every day. But I think that flush really did the trick when it comes to uh, the damage and the salts. Also, look at those roots. They just go in the moss pole. Look. Oh my gosh, she's still so pretty even though she has all those holes. Okay, everyone. Miss producer, do you see I'm holding her? I'm just holding the handle of the bucket to carry her. Still kind of at the two to three penetration game. She's become very unstable, but you know, I I still need to put moss, more moss for it to climb. So I'm just putting some boiled moss into the pole. I debated chopping this plant, but it's part of my new year. It was part of it was part of my New Year's goal. I think it was to have this hit the ceiling. So I, I feel like I, I want to make sure that happens. Oh my gosh, I don't know when my mic died. Anyhow, I said that I want to carry the Pertusa in here before I water the moss pole because I think she's gonna be too heavy and I have her tied against um, this table with like the string because I'm, I'm so scared that she's gonna just fall over. Okay, I just have my water bottle full of leftover nutrient solution. Um, like half diluted. I also put like a mosquito dunk because I don't know, during this time, fungus gnats are just like everywhere and like my nematodes, they're best used as a preventive. So because it's been an issue, I've been using mosquito dunk. So kind of made a tea with a nutrient solution and the water. And so <laughs> don't laugh at this plant tape situation. I just needed something to like, when, I, when I'm done with it, just to like pull it out because some of these moss poles, like I have to like put my whole hand and arm in it to, to get this back. So I'm just gonna put it, and this is not gonna help the top heaviness. Do you see how it's tipping? Okay. Oh. So the bottles go win. See the bubblanias. And then for all my plants that are in moss poles, like my queen over here, uh, I just have these cups with holes at the bottom. And every couple days, I kind of like assess the moss pole and I just fill up the cup and it's a slow trickle. 
then I really try to do this before the moss pole is like completely dry. And I think that's another reason why I'm having like a fungus net issue. Like it was really bad because I've been keeping my moss poles wet. And yeah, so I've been using the mosquito dung. They've been doing a great job. Like last week it was like pandemonium. <laughs> I do want to do another, <clears throat> what was that? <laughs> My voice, did you hear that? I wanna do another philodendron that y'all haven't seen. I have to, first of all, add another moss pole. Um, just because she is shingling, I don't even know if this is a shingling plant, but she is shingling up beautifully. <laughs> okay, see, beautiful. And then neglect the house down boots, mama. So I'm just gonna add maybe a couple moss poles. Like she is a fast grower. Uh, oh gosh, oh, this is the large one. Clear moss pole. This is the large size. I do like the large size. Probably my favorite one. Just because you get like a lot of surface area. They're taller. Uh, so you don't need to stack as many on top of each other. Oh, no, 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 no. Guys, my beard. Do you see that? No, 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 Girl, y'all living in a condo or apartment or whatever, like a rental, where you can't nail anything into the wall. It's a pain because you can see I've been using 3Ms and they've actually done a good job. Like they probably stay on the walls for a year-ish and then they start falling down. Help the Beatles. Okay, which is, what is my favorite song from this album? Ooh, help is good. <gasps> Yesterday, yesterday. All my troubles seem so far away. I don't even know what it was. Oh yeah, the moss pole. <gasps> oh my God. Uh, I don't know if I said this, but these moss poles are from North Shore Tropicals. They come in different sizes. No. Let's pack the moss pole and then tie her. Actually, I think I might just put y'all on the floor. So what's new everyone? I know I haven't like done any videos where I've like talked it's about other things, like updates about me, um, because I'm actually filming this. What's the date today? I don't even know. It is the 26th of September that I'm filming this. Yeah, I know. I'm like filming this during my break. <laughs> it's hard. You can't really take a break from YouTube because you need to film and edit the stuff before. So that's why I want to take two weeks because I've just kind of been taking my time filming and editing and not like stressing myself out with, you know, pumping out videos. Like the organization video, I filmed that in like mid, was it mid September? I think it was. And the favorites video and the philodendron collection video, they are not even recorded or filmed yet. And, but I'm, I'm really excited to, to show those ones. But yeah, things have been good. My birthday was good. Oh my God, I'm out of moss. Of course. Okay, it's actually been an hour. <laughs> I boiled poor moss and I just watched an episode of Star Trek Voyager. Okay, since this is turning to a moss pole video, but Syngonium Wenlandii. <laughs> oh my God, she's looking so good. Here's the thing, the reservoir is dry. Um, I'm finding now that she's under my vent, like right under the vent, she's drying out a lot. And so, oh Lord, dust, actual dust. Roots still look good, still look good. So we're just gonna clean up a little bit and I'm gonna add another moss pole. Okay, clean up, clean up. Okay, let's take you off. Wow, a lot of these are really dry. I think that's why there's a bit of yellow leaves, but just as long as they're the oldest, we're all good. Anyhow, wow, I don't even think I continued on like what I was saying. Um, I had a good birthday. Uh, my boyfriend's birthday was a few days after, and then my dad's birthday is in a few days. It's always a cluster of like get togethers and celebrations. Like my boyfriend's family stayed here for a few days and my family's gonna come over uh, this coming weekend to celebrate. And so that's gonna be cute. Okay, I'm like thinking now, because when I put all these propagations in this planter, there were some that were young. There were some that were like more mature. The ones that were more mature, they're like up here. Oh, can we take in the leaves? Wow. This is like the best stage. They still have the stripe and they have the separation and the um, like the tri-leaf situation. So then you have some small ones 
that are still cute, but they're not like against the moss pole because they were just too small to reach it. So I might take off the plant tape and the press and seal and then maybe attach them. And I know there might not be like room on this moss pole, but we're still gonna try. Yeah guys, I am on my knees because I need to get a view of all of these stems and where the aerial roots are gonna grow. Just making sure they all fit. Syngoniums, how do we feel? I mean, I love this one. Landii, y'all know that she was uh, like a free plant with a purchase. So this one was never on my radar, like never, never, never. And then, you know, she, she wasn't looking good. And then I was like, okay, let's try her in Leka. And she just thrived. Uh, what, what else have I done? Baked? I've baked, y'all. Apple pie? I'm gonna try to make the crust like later today just so it could chill for about a day. I'm gonna make another apple pie. I have some Cortland apples. I feel like because I bake, a lot of people think that I cook. I like, I don't cook at all. Uh, my boyfriend does the cooking. I feel like I wanna cook more. And so that's gonna be one of my things moving forward. Okay, I think that's good. Now I'm just gonna, the thing when you poke holes with these, <laughs> with these cups is um, sometimes the holes are too small, but they don't drip. I think that's what happened here. So hopefully that is okay. Let me just grab more. Okay, I'm just gonna leave her here just because the bottom part of the moss pole is still kind of dry. So. I'm just gonna keep refilling and then even like looking at the reservoir and seeing how much runoff there is into the reservoir. Okay, Miss McDowell is looking so cute. This is the one that's on the moss pole. I'm just gonna add more moss. And I didn't think there was any rootage, but look at that, Fuji Kevin Zoom In. That is a root right over there. Um, I didn't know if it had one because looking at the aerial roots here, they look dry. So I, I, I still didn't think that maybe it might be from a, a lower one. Anyhow, either way, this is incredible. Wow. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So I got some new plants. And so even though I don't have like a thrip issue, I always like to treat for for thrips with um, an aggressive beneficial. So I have Oris insidious, Insidiosis. I have that beneficial and I feel like they've congregated to this McDowell, even though this McDowell is under a vent and Oris doesn't necessarily like dry conditions. I'm shocked because it's been like a week and a half and I see a whole bunch and they're drinking the nectaries. Isn't that wild? Okay, I'm gonna try to take a picture because I think it's cool. Oh, she ran. Okay, do you see her? She is running, but they're all kind of situated close to the nectaries. There she is. Oh God, this quality is horrendous, but she's just drinking. I've been drinking, I've been drinking. I guess I'll show you, I'm not really like, following any rules about like placement of holes, how big they are. I just kind of like make at least four holes in this cup. I usually just take my shears and I'm like, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Fill it with water and see like what's happening. And that looks good. So I'm gonna put it over top here. It fits nicely just cause it has the rim and I'm filling it with that nutrient solution just cause it has, um, the mosquito dunk. So one big thing that I changed, she was getting really bleached on the edges and this leaf was up against my south facing window. I feel like I'm a broken record, but I'm gonna repeat it again. I get the most light September to October in my room just because it is a south facing window, but during September and October, the sun is lower in the sky. Since it's lower, it's more of a blast <laughs> to these leaves. Specifically philodendrons, you don't need to blast them with light. They actually, I mean, they'll show that <laughs> you're blasting it. Oh my God, am I killing the bug? Did I kill the bug? Where it was, where, and it's gone now. Oh, I'm sorry. Wow. There's like slight iridescence when you move it. And I don't know if, if y'all can see it, but I'm gonna try not to touch her too much. Oh, hey everyone. Um, It's 
Oh God, four days later? I wanna look at some baby anthuriums. I feel like I've neglected them ever since I organized this room and there's a chance I might move them somewhere else because I feel bad anyhow. So I think this one's dry. <laughs> Anthurium Crystallina Magnificum for Getty Eye Luxurians. I don't think, have I shown this? I don't even know. So the place where I moved her, I think I'm giving her too much light, but oh my God, look at her. Previous leaf looks good. Look at that new leaf. Um, you can see that the <laughs> reservoir is dry. Oh my God, look how cute. Oh my God, the roots look so good though. Seriously? But I mean, let me show you dust. Yeah, it's interesting because most, I think most of my baby anthuriums were on this side of the room. This side of the room, I would say is one of my cooler areas. Now that she's against the window, when the sun is shining, it gets hot. So I feel like these plants are more thirsty. Also, it could just be because they're maturing, they're growing more roots. So I'm gonna water her. Um, I'm probably gonna repot her soon in a bigger planter. Do y'all do this too? Um, when it comes to replanting plants, I do believe you can do it all year round. However, I don't prefer repotting in the cooler months. Um, it's October now, so I think this is the last month where it's gonna be like actually warm in this room for most of the day. So I just wanna take advantage of that. So I know she doesn't necessarily need to be repotted, but I mean, y'all saw the roots peeking through the bottom. Might as well do it now. Ooh, oh, we were dry. I legit have not looked at this one, but oh my God, that's a new leaf. Okay, Anthurium clarinervium. Man, oh man. Look at her. Uh, one of the baby leaves has dad, but she looks good. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Oh my God, there is a new leaf coming already. Right over there. I don't think I've shown this one. Um, Anthurium Magnifum crossed with Luxurian. So here she is. It's weird because I really thought this was gonna be more heavy on the Luxurian side. It might just be this one leaf. Uh, she had some issues unfurling. You can see the Holianias. Previous leaf as a refresher was this gorgeous gorgeous leaf but do you see the difference this one's like really like bumpy so pretty and then this one it's a bit more smooth a bit more smooth looks like you just got exfoliated but yeah i don't know it's I, it's so interesting these hybrids uh, okay and this one oh gosh i'm like losing track this is my anthurium crystallinum magnificum crossroad luxuriance so if y'all remember this was the one that got stuck unfurling because I ignored her so she has all that damage. And yeah, here she is. But it's weird, they're looking a bit more longer and not as round as the other ones. So like, do you see how it's like more pointy and like it's straighter here? The same with one of the older leaves. I don't know, I find it interesting. Let's see if uh, the roots have gone into the reservoir because maybe I might, look at this. Oh my gosh, she's dripping. Oh my gosh. Okay, I definitely need to repot this because, like I was saying before, okay, I need to make a note. Okay, y'all, it's probably been a week since what y'all just saw in the previous clips. I'm wearing glasses. It's been a while. I know I was wearing glasses a lot, specifically during Vlogmas. Ah, here's the thing. I have issue with glasses just because the moment you see some little speck, some little smudge, it just irritates me and that's why I wear contacts anyhow. Trying it out. We'll see if I take them off midway through. <laughs> My Hoyas, ignore the house damn boots, mama. So I'm just gonna look at these Hoyas. I'm gonna kinda see if they're okay. I already like moved them all here. Oh wow, oh wow. Let's start off with the Hoya Matilde. This is about the one month update. I think the last time I showed it, I was assessing cause like the leaves looked wrinkly and I was trying to keep the water line higher, but there's new growth, so. It's all good. <laughs> so you can see some new growth there. Ooh, right over there. Right there, right there. This tinge rail, that right there, that right there. Like it is looking so good. All of them, none of them died. If we're looking at a Hoya that I have the most experi exp <laughs> experience propagating, it's the Hoya Matilde. So that's her. The second one looks more full. Now this is the one that I kept two leaves 
for the most part on each plant. I don't know if that aided in, you know, faster growth just because there was another solar panel to suck in the light, but I mean, I can't really show you individually. You can see that there's one, two, three, four, at least tendrils. And then when we go forward here, you can see that there's three. You can see like small little tiny, tiny leaves, small, cute leaves. Again, no casualties. So easy, y'all. My tail, it's just doing her thing. Now, ever since I moved everything in the room, because they're all pretty short, I have a grow light right here. Again, my personal preference, two to 3,000 foot candles. At that point, I'm happy. Now, I get a lot of comments saying that it's too much, and for some Hoyas, it definitely is too much, but for some, I don't believe that. I kind of have a different mindset when it comes to propagating Hoyas. Cutting a Hoya down to the stem with no existing root system, in my opinion, you can't cut corners when it comes to light. And I know the Matilde, is pretty hardy when it comes to low to medium light. Like it, it really could look fine and appear fine. Um, long term though, I don't think that's a thing. But for propagations, I think you should blast them. Even though there's new growth, I'm not gonna move it. I'm looking for vines before I decrease the light. And still at that point, I would probably give it a thousand foot candles. Moving on, Poya lobii, black flower, flowers what is wrong with me flowers <laughs> look at that three or four i think did i do three or four one two i did four this one at the front hasn't pushed out anything i might cut a leaf and see what happens i'm so happy seeing these three do grow because remember i've had success with that plant but listen the last and only time i propagated this plant the two propagations died and i propagated them straight in leka i think i didn't keep the leka wet and that's why it died and so for me even though i grew this plant big even though she bloomed for me multiple times i felt that i still haven't successfully propagated this plant and now we got three new growths it's definitely rooted like i can see roots i don't know if, ugh, who cares <laughs> um i might i might just cut a leaf let's do this one. Ooh, look at that i don't even know which one it's coming from but look at that juicy root oh there's another one yes ma'am yes ma'am so that is very exciting you know what there's a chance because since i have these beneficial sachets with the ones in leka i'm just kind of laying them on the planter because it's kind of hard can't really hang them on the leaf i mean you no you can't so i've just been like throwing a sachet on top and i'm thinking i might have been covering this one and she wasn't getting any light anyhow i love how i was gonna do it again that is her i'm just putting the sachet under the leaf Hopefully that's okay. Okay, this next one. It's a little early. We're we're like a week or two before the three-month mark, I think. Hoya serpents. What an amazing plant. This is almost three months worth of growth. Look at her. And now, because I think in the previous update, it was kind of hard to show you the new growth. I was just saying, look at the brighter green leaves. Now you could really see them here like in comparison with the darker like mother leaves look at this uh visually i don't think there has been any casualties nope i don't see any but look that is incredible i like i don't know it's it's just so exciting you know seeing a plant like this like i've said before i've grown the mother and she's been really full but i've never propagated this plant so yeah I mean, come on, y'all. Look at that. I still have the mother. She's up a trellis. The actual definition of chaos, my Hoya serpents. Look at how much it's branched since I chopped, you know, those vines. Obviously, it's been three months, and you can see again the new growth and differentiate. It's not really... Yeah, these are newer. Not as green as the other ones, but I think it, it might be because the propagations are still getting 2,000 to 3,000 foot candles, whereas this one's probably getting like 1,000 to 2,000. Maybe that's why, but wow. Yeah, this is a beast. This plant, this Hoya is a beast and I love her so much. And see, I'm okay, even though like the ends here or the tips 
aren't pushing out new leaves because they're not really like feeling supported, there will be another node that will push out another tendril. And in my experience, it's so easy. Like for example, look at this already here. See, this vine is going down, and then this, this end is the main vine. But you can see that it already branched because it wasn't feeling supported. Here's the T, though. It's not T. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Here's the thing. I have yet to get this Hoya to bloom. Isn't that wild? There's peduncles everywhere. I'm not necessarily feeding it like my nutrient solution i'm only really feeding it with a half diluted nutrient solution every month i would say and then just filling the reservoir with just plain tap water there was a time where i was feeding it like the full strength nutrient solution every single watering i don't know if that's why it branched so much so much initially and Honestly, getting your hoya to bloom, it is multifactorial and I don't think it's all dependent on nutrients. I, I strongly believe also it has to do with certain hoyas. It has to do with uh, maturity of the plant. Uh, I don't think that's the case with this one. Really, it's a mystery to me why it hasn't bloomed. It's hard because there are some hoyas that have bloomed within a year of getting them as like a two leaf cutting. There's some that have taken like three years in my experience. Uh, again, it might be temperature, it might be humidity related. And that's why it's hard. I know I asked y'all before if you wanted a video explaining how like I got my hoist to bloom. I think I'm still gonna do that probably. Those videos will come out in September, uh, not September. Ooh, time right now is a blur. November when Wax Plant Wednesday returns. But I was just gonna talk about my Hoyas and how I got them to bloom. A lot of it is specific to your experience and your conditions and your care. And it's not necessarily because of like me feeding these plants more phosphorus. Like I don't think it's only that. I left a few trailing at the bottom, y'all. Okay, let's do another three month update one. So Hoya Chinkungensis. Now this is the mama, so don't be fooled. Uh, so remember I took just vines, you can see that these two, um, that's a point I cut. But look at all these new branches, looking so good. So I'm really happy seeing this branching because y'all know that I had to ignore her, had to put her in a box, but this is wonderful. So this is the mama, I don't know why I said it like that, the mama, this is the mama. Now y'all know that there's two containers, this is one. So there are some that are faster than others. You can see right there, right over there, right over there. But there are new growths like there. I'm gonna look, I can't really see. It's tough because in person, I can see them clearly, but when I look in the viewfinder, I don't know what y'all can see. Oh, <gasps> the water again, oh my gosh. Still keeping the reservoir really high and still keeping this right under grow light. But look at that. Okay, and now uh, the pa, the pa of Chinkungensis. Look at this. I, I wanna show like this because I feel like if I show you like that, y'all can't really see anything. Look at all these new growths. Do you see? There's so many. And I still kind of ignore this one because the saucer is so shallow that I have to keep refilling this every two days. I think the last time I showed this, there were some that were dead in this corner because on my wire shelf, the legs are never like even on the wires. <laughs> and so I think that's why I think this patch dried out a little bit too much and then the cuttings died. And then when I rehydrated them, they rotted. But I'm so impressed. I am so impressed with all of this. Similar to the other one, there are some that still haven't really pushed out anything and I can't even see them in the uh, screen over here. But in person, I can see them. So that's really exciting. Look at this. I was like worried. I was so worried. But look at this. So we have some new plants. At what point am I gonna repot these? I think I'm gonna wait a little bit more. It's so hard though. I'm gonna wait a little bit more. Maybe a couple weeks, maybe a month, uh, but I'll definitely show the process just so y'all can see the roots. So I usually fill the saucer in place because every time I fill it here, I have to carry it to the room, everything spills. So that is the three month update for the Hoya Chinghengensis. So this one's getting probably 1,500 to 2,000 foot candles. This one's getting 
I'm spilling again. Two to 3,000 foot candles. So really bright. This one's probably getting only maybe 500 to 1,000. The reason why, and this is a Hoya that I feel like can do okay when the light is a bit lower. I have a grow light right here, but the vines are facing this way and it's towards the part of the room that isn't against any of the windows. Uh, I've grown this before really long and she wasn't like under a grow light. She was just kind of trailing. And I mean, clearly she's okay. So this is an example of a plant where the moment it starts growing, so when these get a little bit more longer, I will probably move. I will probably move them away. The reason why I'm still keeping them under grow light is just because it's just unfortunate that there are some that are still like pretty young or haven't pushed out new growth. So I don't wanna like move them and then all those will die. I just kinda wanna have those push out healthy growth. At that point, I'll move them away, but that's them. Okay, Hoya New Guinea Ghost. Y'all know that I took cuttings from my plant in Lekka because I didn't like how she was looking. I actually got rid of that plant and just kept the cuttings in pawn. It's kind of hard to show. And this is the one month update, I think. Uh, you can see that's a new leaf here. These two down here, those are new. Ooh, so exciting. Obviously these two tendrils are new. I don't think I did the cake dowel method, so. I think I just didn't know what I was gonna do with all these, cause y'all know I already put a bunch of cuttings in pond that are more mature. Those are the ones that I started in perlite originally. And like, I was trying not to keep multiples. This is gorgeous though. When you hit them with a lot of light, they it brings out the pinks. So two to 3,000 foot candles, that's the amount of light I'm giving it. I'm still keeping the reservoir really high. And I personally find, I know I say this with Mathilde a lot, but like New Guinea Ghosts, seriously, it is so fast at pushing out roots. It's so fast at pushing out new growth when you give it the right con condition. So making sure the reservoir doesn't dry out completely. Uh, like I I'm kind of shocked that it's only been a month and there's like these cute new leaves. I don't know. So yeah, that is her. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing. I'm just filling up a little bit more of the reservoir. Okay, not much to show. This is the one month update of my Hoya Nova Ghost. This is a mixed pot where I do have the mother plants that I cut all the way down as well as the propagations. I don't think I would do that in the, f in the future just because y'all know with propagations, I like to keep the water level really high. The mother plants, because they already had an existing root system, if you put the water level to that same level that I like, you're gonna drown them, you're gonna suffocate them. So I've had to, I've just been managing the best I, I can, just not keeping it too high, but also like keeping the top part wet because like the stems are only this short and the pot is this deep. I feel like I'm like going on and on and on. At this point, I would kind of do my assessments. Like I kind of pull, like for example, this one's coming out <laughs> and feeling the leaves, they don't feel the best. Oh my God, focus. And feeling the leaves, they feel okay. Like they're still firm. The Nova Ghost, the leaves are generally like thicker. So it's, sometimes it's hard to tell. But when you compare it to like other leaves that are in here, they're not as firm. You can see that there are small roots and it's hard because sometimes you'll feel a leaf, it'll feel dehydrated like superficially. And then when you pull it out, you see this tiny, tiny, tiny root. That root is not big enough yet to sustain or to hydrate the plant enough for those leaves to feel fully hydrated. Even though I didn't see anything, even though like the leaves felt okay, I still think that you should just do your checks. Just do your checks. Um, everyone else feels okay. I'm pulling, which is good because I'm pulling. Similar to this one, I think this was the only loose one and none of them are coming out as easily as this one. And so that tells me that they have root systems that are bigger than that. I'm actually gonna cut a leaf because I don't know how I'm gonna put this back in. So I'm just gonna cut you, goodbye. Y'all can't see it, but kind of dug a hole with my finger. As I was doing that, I saw new roots from other cuttings. And so that makes me feel a whole lot better. Okay, <laughs> I think this is the one month update of the Hoya Polynera Broguette. It is, oh my God, it is so hard. Right there, that is definitely a new growth. Two of them don't have anything yet. That right over there is gonna be a new vine. And then this one, this big one, look at this, two, two. So that's wonderful. I'm pretty sure I filled the reservoir yesterday and you can see here. 
And I know people like to worry about the foliage and what it looks like. Honestly, guys, don't worry about the foliage of the, of the mother leaves. When you're propagating a plant, you kind of need to sacrifice those leaves, no matter how beautiful they are. Just know that they're going to push out so much new growth. 2,000 to 3,000 foot candles. And yeah. So I think there's five kings in here. I don't think I said that, but they're doing their thing. They're doing their thing. Okay, we're about at the one month update of the Hoya Grassy Petiolata Splash. And if y'all remember, I divided them. So I have the bottom like rooted mothers and no movement. Not too worried. I actually haven't really looked at this one, but like feeling the leaves, they feel fantastic. That is one thing if you, if you don't see anything up here, like just definitely do your assessments and see if the leaves feel floppy. Moving to the propagations, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you can kind of see movements in the node so future kevin's who man look at that it's pro is it focus i don't know but that's gonna be a new thing right there that's ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> that was another one this is a new vine right there looking gorgeous it, it is pretty similar with all of them it's kind of what i would expect at this point, um, a month from chopping her. The Crassia Petiolata is fast. And yeah, we're just gonna see what happens. I'm super excited. Okay, Hoya species gonna getting. Pretty sure it's been a month. Let's just say that. Because she's under grow light, she is now this beautiful sun-stressed red. It is incredible. Yeah, it's cool, because y'all saw that these leaves were originally green when I first propagated it. And now this Hoya is just so stunned. Sun, sun, the water fail everyone. Cause this part of the leaf is blocked. It's still green. <laughs> that is so funny. I don't see any new growth from the nodes, but again, just knowing how these leaves feel and feeling them. I don't like, again, I don't like disturbing the roots. I would assess the roots if it's been a month, for example, at this point, and that the leaves were still wrinkly, like I would assess at that point. The three, is it the three mothers? I'm not even sure. They're also sun-stressed. Oh, the pond. They're also sun-stressed. And I don't see new growth. It's gonna be interesting because there are some that have already pushed out multiple growths from like the same point. So Hoyas have the ability to push out growths time and time again. But sometimes in my experience, like it is a lot slower for them to push out growth if they've done it already so many times from the same point. Um, and same thing, feeling it, it's all good. These were the mothers, so they were already rooted. So I'm not worried about that. So yeah, that is the month update of the Gun and Getting. Video wise, this next Hoya I didn't put in any of my YouTube videos. Hoya Croniana Black Hoya Croniana Black Flower. They're not black. It's just Hoya Croniana Black leaves. <laughs> so that was one of the plants that I had to say goodbye to. She's with my mom. But before that, I did take a few cuttings. So this is a month update and it pretty much looks the same. I do want to talk about this. Um, and I, oh, okay. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Wow. That is rot the house down. Okay. So every time I do these videos, I don't necessarily like removing things that have died off, things that look bad because I wouldn't want to not show you the casualties because I think that's very important. I actually don't know why that one died. I've already felt all the leaves. They feel good. Um, yeah, they feel really good. Mm, there's one here that might be questionable. I felt the, I pulled out the questionable one and there's still no roots. Cause out of all of them, it's funny cause they still feel firm, but there's no roots at all. And like the stem feels good, it's not rotten. And so I think I might just cut a leaf cause maybe it wasn't like fully in the uh, the pawn. I'm just pushing it back in, trying my best not to disrupt the other ones. It's funny, I just pulled another one out because when I pulled it and I do a tug test at this point at the one month mark to see if there's anything that's not rooted. And because the stems are so short on the croniana when I propagated them, like even if they're rooted like really well, and you could see here, rooted so well. And there is a new growth point. I didn't see this because it was under the pond, but right there, look at this. 
Whew, question mark, I'm gonna put this back. Okay, I'm gonna have to dig a little bit. Why don't I just go like this? So, ooh, she was living here. I'm just using my finger to kinda dig. Hopefully there's enough of an indentation there. Yes, okay, then putting it in. And I'm just trying to bury it again without stealing the pond from the other plants that are in here. But do you see what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm tugging all the rest of them. They're not moving. They're moving a little bit because like that one, it was so superficial, like the roots. So with this one, I'm not really trying to remove it. I'm just, if the stems are that short and I do a gentle tug and they don't have enough roots, then it would just come right out easily. Uh, they're not coming out except for, oh, this is the one. <laughs> this is the one that didn't have roots. So that was the only one. So yeah, overall, really happy. Oh my gosh, I didn't think this was gonna take so long. <laughs> and okay, y'all, I guess that's it. First plant chart video in a while because I took that break. I'm not gonna lie. It's it was it's hard to explain to people who don't film themselves often, but every time I take a break that's like two weeks to a month, it's like I don't know how to act in front of a camera. <laughs> so <laughs> so anyhow, the plant chores never end. It's weird because I feel like the needs of my plants have increased in the past month and it's weird to me because it's October. I think it's because the sun is uh, blasting my room right now and the hours of light, they're still okay. It's gonna plummet in the next <laughs> few weeks. Anyhow, thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it and I'll see you guys later. Bye.